1813 of Proverbs. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. Now go back to verse 3. And I'm still in, chapter, in Proverbs 14. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Verse 4 is what I want to deal with mainly. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Different translation, verse 4. A barn with no cattle might be clean, but strong wolves are needed for a good harvest. Interesting. Read it again. That, what, what translation is that? Easy to read version. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read it. A barn with no cattle might be clean, but strong wolves are needed for a good harvest. Strong wolves are needed for a good harvest. Another translation? Uh, Martin? Where there are no oxen, the manger is clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. Yeah, so, so there is a kind of position there, right, on how, how, how those things. And I want you to see that now there will be some translations that give, give you a slight different thing. It will not say clean. It will say empty. <clears throat> it says where there's no oxen, the crib is, is empty or the barn is empty. And it goes on to say that. But many of the translations, including King James and the ones you read, says the ox, if there's no ox in the crib or the barn, is clean. And, and, and then it goes on to say that, <clears throat> but if you want abundance, you need the oxen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Father, for the scripture this morning, Father. We lift up Oscar, Father, we pray your anointing upon him. Father, that he would bring the word, Father, that you want us to hear this morning, Father. And Father, we would remember it, Father, that it would stay in our hearts, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. What is the purpose of a barn? To store. It's to store something. Amen. So this is a, a, a weird proverb, right? Because you walk in and you look at a barn that is spotless and you get surprised and you may love the owner and say, whoa, this guy's keeping it clean. You know the owner wasn't me, right? Because nothing that I drive or, 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 or are is clean. Those of you who have tried to ride my car know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so you can admire that person at that moment and say, check it out. We can actually post it on Facebook. Cleanest barn ever. But the proverb is telling you something. It says, if you don't have the oxen, yes, there will be a clean barn. Why? Because there will not be animals roaming and eating and living around stuff or actually going to the bathroom around and all this stuff that happens when you have animals. And if you have a bunch of oxen in there, that's what you're going to have. Amen. And yet, the proverb goes to tell you, but if you have oxen, then the barn will be full. And he's saying, what's your choice? You want it spotless and clean and smelly in a good way? Or you want the barn full? And the proverb is actually attempting to move you in the direction of understanding that things can get messy when you have oxen around. But that there is a power to understand how to fill up that barn. There are components that you need to be able to move that barn and have it full of what it's meant to be. Now, <clears throat> You can use that to excuse a lot of junk that you do in church and stuff. It's not what I want to do this morning or ever. But I do want to point out to, to something. Sometimes we forget what the purpose of church is. 
Now I'm just going to start with church. The purpose of church is not for us to get around well-dressed, look at each other, <laughs> say God bless you and have potlucks. That's not the purpose. It's good, but that's not the purpose. The purpose of church is not for us to have every educated person and every person who has uh, some kind of a together kind of life to look at each other. The purpose of church is not for us to have a massive amount of people sitting around and demonstrating the power of togetherness. All of those things may have a good reason to be around, but that's not the purpose of the church. Your life, the purpose of your life, the purpose of your life, you could, you could have a, a good marriage, a good life, a good job. All of those things are things that are useful in the kingdom. But that's not the purpose God made you. A good marriage and a good life can be had by a non-Christian. The problem is actually a profound statement in saying what is the vision and the desire? What is the purpose of a barn? The purpose of a barn is not to be clean. The purpose of a barn is to be full. Of the harvest. And that you have to understand that if you play it in a way that you don't want to miss this and miss that, that you're going to end up with an empty barn. Clean, but empty. You have entire denominations who look at something and step away from it because. They want a clean barn, not a full barn. They forget it. They will look at Jesus and say, Jesus, you're messing it up. You're sitting with, with sinners and, and hanging around with prostitutes and, and, and the people that are around you are drunks. And, and, and they, 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 they're saying, you know, what are you doing? And the master will be clear on that. The master will say, I wasn't sent for those who are healthy. I was sent for those who are sick. Why would I get hanging out as a doctor, you know, bring you in here when you're perfectly healthy? I have to be with the ones who are struggling. That was Jesus' words. What is the purpose then of life? Why does God have us on this earth? God will look at your life and mine and tell you, be an oxen and work with oxen. There will be a struggle in that process. Sometimes you're going to say the wrong thing. Sometimes you're going to act the wrong, the wrong way. Sometimes you'll be around people who do that too. But as long as you keep the purpose in front of you, I can tell you what the purpose of my life is. When God created me, he had a plan in his mind. So in yours, but I'll use mine. He delivered me from a war-torn place because he had a plan. His plan wasn't for me to just hang around and hang a degree behind me. I did go to school, yes. And that's part of his plan. But that wasn't what he had in mind as a purpose. There's plenty of people who go to universities and got a bunch of degrees and they're not Christians. That's not what his plan was. His plan wasn't for me to have this cute little life. His plan was for me to be an oxen to fill up his barn. To bring in the harvest. Me personally to preach the gospel to the nations. To stand in any corner and speak the word of God. Amen. To have the opportunity to grab another pastor and you know and strengthen their arms. When I rise up in the morning, that purpose has to be there. Yeah. 
If you're born to play it safe, you're going to have a safe life, but you're not going to have an effective life. Now, I'm going to say one more thing in that purpose because I have heard people use this passage to excuse wrong theology. Wrong theology to me has nothing to do with this passage. But where you find is this. When God brings a group of people together, like us, a ministry, he knows we're going to make a mess. Yeah. Each one of us is going to bring his own little mess. Some of us are more publicly messy and other ones are not that messy. Some of you guys are so clean, I don't even know if you ever have a mess in your life. But if we could have everyone perfect in this house, we still haven't fulfilled any purpose. Because the purpose wasn't for us to keep this thing clean. The purpose was for us to fill up the kingdom of God. Amen. If I like you, that doesn't matter. If you like me, I don't care. What matters is we're on the soul for the kingdom. Where is the power of God moving among the nations? Where is the shaking of the nations by the word of God? The barn has to be full. That's our job. The owner is him. And he brought us here that we may do what we have to do. You'll have to deal with rough stuff from time to time. And you have to have a way to clean up this stuff. Otherwise, we'll drown in it. And yet, do not lose focus on what we're doing. Amen. The vision of a ministry, the vision of a church, the vision of a family, the vision of a person, it is not to live a cute life. To play it safe, to get up and go to work and come back. All of those things are part of life. But the Bible is clear when it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Whenever I have... I've been moved by God to say he's going to send me over to Africa or he's going to send me over to Mexico. There's always that little fear from those who love you. Oh, don't go. You're going to get hurt. I'm sure you've heard this. And don't head in this direction. And, and, and I sit here and I said, yes, that may be true for somebody who wasn't called to do that. But I was called to do this. And if I stay here, yes, I may be safe, but I will not be bringing or filling up the barn. When he sends me, he sends me knowing that he has to protect me. And if he's done, he's done. I'm not going to do something stupid. But I will do what he's called me to do. And if in the process you pay the price, like John the Baptist or any of the great men of the Bible, so be it. I hope that when I die, my barn it's not recognized as the clean barn only, but as the full barn. Now, when I go, I can say like Paul, I have run the race. I finished my course. Fill up the barn, brothers. Fight for that, sisters. Look at what God has placed you to do and fight with everything. End the process. There will be a little mess. And I'll talk about cleaning up that mess next. God bless you. Where's the phone number? What was that? Oh, Turn your phone yeah, I will. Yeah. You forgot your taco. I won, I won. I, that's one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> 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 <laughs>